Hello, Armin here. In this breakdown, we're going to talk about datamag file and we're going to break down this conversation into three parts. First of all, we're going to talk about uh, video processing or the iMac part of it. Then we're going to talk about OSC controls. And if you've never tried it before, I will just show you how to set it up with the touch OSC controller. Uh, and then we're going to talk about capture image uh, file node, which is inevitably the necessary step if you want to make a photo boot. Right. So with that said, uh, I'm jumping into the node graph and let's just talk uh, about the nodes that we have here. Now, there's quite a few of them. So perhaps the easiest thing to do uh, would be is if we start with uh, everything disabled and we enable things as we progress. So in this case, let's focus uh, right here to this little chain right here. Uh, we are receiving the video file via this video null and the video null is equipped with the threshold post effect. So threshold post effect uh, allows us to choose uh, what information should be skipped out and what should be left uh, and it kind of produces this very very raw either black or white information which is great because then we can take this uh, this very information and pipe it to the clone to image. And since we're sending it to clone to image, uh, clone to image just literally outputs the clones exactly where it sees the white color. So in this case, clone to image is using several operators. As far as clone to image is concerned, it has two operators, but in our case, those two operators has several variables. So we are using two uh, select child nodes and both of them are equipped with several options. So for instance, the first one has a X, 4 and D text file that is going out. And the second one has a D, 5 and O. Uh, the way Notch selects which should be outputted is via the math modifier. So basically we're sending a random noise or random value from 0 to 3. And select child just oscillates and shoots out one or the other. So all of a sudden it looks like we have uh, quite a bit of uh, information going through. But all in all is just a clone to image with two operators and those two operators has a couple of values. So since we're already using threshold to output this clone to image, here a little bit further down we have another one which is doing exactly the opposite uh, or taking in the exact opposite information than uh, the first one is. So if uh, this threshold is set to the above mode, this one right here is set to below. So all of a sudden we have sort of the inverse setting and uh, the logic here is absolutely the same. Again, we have clone to image, couple of effectors and clone to image has two operators and those two operators again has a couple of uh, variables. Here further down the line we have the third clone to image and this one is using edge detect uh, with a little bit of a feedback. So basically these little bits in the front and if I pan out from the active rendering camera you will see that there's a bit of a depth, there's a bit of a distance from one cloner system to another just to give a bit of volume to things. So this is the basic part of uh, cloner processing. Um, obviously this is not uh, fit for production, like this is just too messy to be readable. So in order to make this a little bit more coherent and a little bit uh, easier to understand, uh, we have a couple of image planes. So for instance, this one right here has several post effects attached to it and that's a threshold. Again, uh, <laughs> vector blur, edge detect, pixelate uh, and recolor. So basically we are just adding a little bit more information and in the image plane, instead of using the, uh, the default blend mode, which doesn't have any alpha in it, we're using a uh, max. So now those two things talk together and they actually form a coherent image. Uh, further down the line, we have a little particle system. So this particle system just uh, spits out either the plus sign or a zero sign uh, and it's powered by the same video uh, and it's just uh, reacting to the motion of the of whatever it sees on the screen via the optical flow. If optical flow is something new to you and you haven't really tried particles or clones in this matter, uh, head to Notch uh, YouTube channel. There's a lot of streams and tutorials about how to set up these things. Uh, in fact, Notch has an essential course, uh, an intermediate course that might be of interest for you as well. I left the links down below in a description area. Cool, and a little bit lower here, I have a couple of more image planes and they are using several extra post effects. Uh, and I'm not gonna go deep into how they are set up because it's literally just uh, image planes with posts. But those are enabled via OSC controller. 
So I think this is a good subject for us to talk next. Uh, OSC control. So if you have never tried a uh, OSC controller in Notch, let me walk you through on how you, how would you set up a OSC control in the system? Uh, I think it's going to be easiest if I just make a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a new one and I'm going to call this OSC. Right, so let's build a little preset for ourselves or a little easy setup. Uh, I think we're going to start with the image 2D because we need an output module and we need some kind of a video. So in this case, this base will work just fine. Now let's find a property that we want to alter. For instance, uh, maybe tint. Right, let's set this tint to red. And uh, let's say we want to control the active property via OSC controller. So we want to turn it, so we want to turn the tinting on and off. So the first step right here would be to find the OSC node. So in this case, we have OSC modifier, just like MIDI modifier, just like envelope modifier. Yeah, it's just there. That's literally how you take out the information coming in. Uh, so for us to make sure that this works with some kind of a controller or some kind of a touch surface that you have, first of all, we have to make sure that it's enabled and set the correct uh, IP connections. I'm going to head to the project settings protocols panel. And here we have OSC bracket and in OSC bracket, we have a option to enable it. So mine is enabled already. If yours is not, just go ahead, tick that enable tick box. Important thing to remember here is the receiving port. So default is 9001. I just left it at that. You can obviously choose whichever else you actually want to use. So 9001. Cool. So Notch is ready to receive the information. Now let's talk about how and where from would you send information. So my favorite app for that is a touch OSC. Uh, it's absolutely free. You can find it on the hexler.net. Again, link down in the description. Uh, not only you can download it as an app for Android or, um, or Apple device, you can actually download an editor and make your own templates and your own setup. So that's what I did in this case. What you see here is a little setup that I made with their touch OSC editor. But we're going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. First of all, let's just make sure about establishing the connection. Um, for touch OSC to work, it has to know the IP address of the machine that it's uh, going to be connecting to. So I'm going to press on this little dot here in the corner to access the settings in the app. And I'm going to make sure that the IP of my machine is reflected in the touch surface or in the iPad. Uh, Important thing to note, both of those things has to be on the same Wi-Fi network if you want them to run. So just make sure that iPad or, or Android device is on the same one as your laptop or your PC. Cool. So let's double check the IP address. Uh, if you don't know the IP address of your machine, you can always find that by command prompt. So let's do that. If you type in CMD, you're brought to command prompt and there you can type in IP config, hit uh, return or enter. And this is the address that you're looking for. So I have this address written in, in the host panel right here. And uh, all of a sudden there's a connection. Now you remember I mentioned that uh, there is uh, a number under the project settings protocols. And that number is receiving port. Now notice that the outgoing port on the app is set to the same value, 9001. So it's important that those two match because the touch OSC is sending to 9001 and Notch is listening on 9001. Okay, cool. So there is already a connection. How do I double check if the information is getting through? Well, there's a tool for that and it's called Connection Monitor. We can find it under the view connection monitor. So as you see, there's several messages for us already available. OSC is listening on 9001. That's great. That's exactly what we set up. So I'm just going to test it out now. I'm going to hit one of the buttons on my OSC panel. And as I do, I see that there is a message coming through and the message is in the name of uh, dash one dash multi toggle one one one. That's great. When it's on, it says one and when it's off, it says zero. So for me to be able to take advantage of this incoming message, I have to copy out the naming convention here to the OSC modifier node. So I'm going to do exactly that. So it's one multi toggle, one dash one dash one. 
Great, so now Notch knows that uh, this OC modifier is listening to this specific message. So I'm going to assign this modifier now to the tint active property. I'll set it to zero and I'm going to apply it. So once I hit this button, all of a sudden I am changing the tint or I'm actually enabling it. And that is because I'm sending uh, this message and this message is reflected in the OC modifier OC address. So uh, the Touch OSC as a product has a lot of templates already available in its library. If you want to build your own uh, template or your own setup, uh, they have Touch OSC editor, as I mentioned before. I actually have it open here. That's exactly how I build my little UI. Uh, and it consists just of a couple of panels. So basically, once you open the Touch OSC editor, you get a prompt of uh, layout. So basically you just choose whichever the device you're using, or you can set a custom one if none of the mentioned there fits uh, your device. Uh, and then you can start right clicking and adding functions, either as buttons or sliders, you name it. Every single property here has an address. So in this case, uh, these four buttons, and it's a multi-toggle, it has dash one, dash one, multi-toggle one. That's exactly what I'm using. And uh, this right here is uh, one, one push one um all of the all of the names are unique uh, and all of the names are auto generated of course you can change to any uh, naming convention that you like i usually stick with the defaults that just works fine for me so once you're done setting up your ui and you are ready to export it to your uh, ipad or your android device all you have to do is press sync and then you're prompted with this little message saying like, hey, make sure that your device is on the same network. Now we already covered that. So if you want to grab whatever you did, you just go to the settings. There is a layout bracket. If you push on the layout, all you have to do is click add and type in the IP address of your machine. As you do that, you get a notification that uh, there is a file coming in and it's gonna be overwriting the previous file, at least in my case, because I already have this loaded. Now in your case, it just might go through and you will have it available here in the list of uh, available templates or layouts. And that's pretty much it. Now you're set and ready to use a uh, touch OSC with Notch. Uh, I think now we're ready to cover the last bit of uh, this breakdown. It's the photo booth thing. Uh, I'm going to come back to the main setting or the main design. And I'm going to talk about the capture image file node. So basically this node allows you to choose a naming convention and uh, designate a space where you want to have the pictures landing. So if you press on the E right here, you can choose where do you want to direct it. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this test. Double click, set folder. Now we have the address. As you see, there's a property called capture enable. So uh, by default, is set to zero or one. Uh, and this is literally what uh, takes a picture, what enables the capturing. Now, in my case, I'm controlling that via OSC modifier. So as I press click on uh, this little panel right here, or <laughs> when I press the click button right here on this panel, uh, it literally snaps a picture and it drops it off to the test location that I just made. One practical thing to mention here, if you're not using alpha, I would always recommend uh, ticking off right alpha channel. There is literally no reason to have that on if you're not using it. So uh, basically we're using a trigger to capture the image. Uh, as you see, we have a capture rate property. So if you were not using an external uh, device to drive this property, you would probably change this to the rate that you deem uh, necessary for you. Right, so this is getting the picture from Notch. So how do we bring it back to Notch, for instance? So for that, I would just run uh, another Notch file uh, alongside this one. Let me set it up. Here we are, and in this new notch file, I'm using image tile file loader. In this case, I don't necessarily need tiles, so I just edit tiles to X and Y one by one. It's literally one big image. Uh, I set the width and height, and I made sure to use the image aspect ratio stretch to fit. Uh, and obviously, you have to choose what, what naming convention are you tackling. So in this case, for me, it's PNG. You can always change it to JPEG or, or whichever else you're actually sending out or receiving. And of course, you need to designate the directory where should this uh, new notch file read from. So I'm going to press on the E again. I'm going to go for desktop and there's my test. I'm going to say 
check this folder right here. So now if I click and take a photo, all of a sudden it's being read back to the next uh, notch project or the aligned notch project. Now you might see that there's a little flash when I'm um, pressing the button and that's intentional. It's kind of important to make sure that a person who is taking a snap actually gets visual feedback that his action has been uh, acknowledged. So for that we have a little uh, image plane here. So it has absolutely no uh, video or image value. It's just a white quad. Uh, so that white quad just enables itself. So it sort of goes on and off uh, in the alpha property. Now, if we were to connect the OSC modifier straight to this property, we would put that white flash directly at the moment where in the picture directly at the moment when the picture is being taken, which is not great. That's why I'm adding here a little delay value uh, node. So it's 0.1 second delay. It could be smaller uh, or it could be bigger if you if you deem so, but I think 0.1 is just fine. So a person knows that the picture was taken and the picture goes through. Okay, I think that pretty much covers the breakdown. Um, I hope you found it handy. Uh, if uh, you are new to Notch or some of the things that I've been showing here is not necessarily clear for you, uh, be sure to check out the links down below. I left some links to some streams, to some tutorials uh, and to Notch uh, e-learning. So there's an essential and intermediate course that uh, covers the logics and covers the basics of the tool. Um, again, thank you for sticking here with me. Uh, I hope to see you in the next breakdown.